Now I've got to cut this. Now I'm not really left-handed, but one way I can try it is this way. And you, after a while, you get you get good going both directions. Before I do that, I see a little nail here. Bend it back and forth. Snaps off. And the other way, the other way I can go is this way. But see, if I go that way, I'm cutting with just the tip and I'm going up here like this, it makes it very awkward. I may have to do that. Let's try left-handed, see how it works. This is, see how floppy this is? It's gonna start chattering and everything. And I'm wondering if I should put a shim or something under here to keep it from chattering as much. Maybe that'll help alleviate the chatter. Because I don't want to do any more damage to this because we're trying to save from here that way, okay? So I'm just, that, there, that, that's going to work. Okay? See, this is all dry rotted out. I got to get a nice little spot there to start with, though. Because I'm if I start straight, I'll end straight. If I start crooked, it's going to take a while for me to get straight without gouging this up. But hey, try it, and however it works, it works. Yeah, I'm not liking that. I'm going to start over here. Too. Then. Once I get it set, this tip will stay there, then maybe I can graduate it over that work direction. What you're doing, try not to cut this edge off. I'm trying to save this edge. You want to plunge this as far as you can fill, and then all of a sudden you'll feel it kind of give a little bit. Then you know you're on the back side. Start on this other side. Let's see how that works. Get my shim back in there. If you're not, if you don't feel comfortable left-handed, you can do it right-handed. Now I see I've kind of come at an angle a little bit, so this kind of tapers out. So I want to try to dig some of that off first before I start my run. Way, you can see I'm not using as much of the blade so I've only got about a quarter of the blade from there down to the tip that's why every once in a while when your tip gets dull you've got to use another blade but then when you're doing other cutting you can still use this blade for other things when you're going to use this up here so don't throw these away It's, you're kind of caught right up in the corner. If you're right-handed, you don't want to do your left hand. That's how I did the other one over there. We'll keep going this way a little bit longer. I should have a mask on, but I don't because I want you to hear what I'm saying. And so as I'm breathing in, I've got little short breaths. So I don't breathe in too much of this stuff and blow out nice and even. 
Short breaths in. Don't take big walk breaths and get all this dust in your throat, okay? harder because my tip's getting dull. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna come over this way and I'm gonna be a left-handed person again. I'm using more of the blade, so I'm using the middle of it to try to cut. I still have to use the tip to get through the very tip of it, but I don't have to use the tip to cut the entire board off as you're going at an angle. You see how I'm saying? Once I come over here, I'm going to hit, I would hit this, so then I'd have to flip around and go the other way. But because I chopped it in half, it's a little bit easier to work with. Hitting something, so I'm going to go back through it, make sure I've got all the way down to the bottom. Okay, I felt it release. Okay, see, this is so rotted out, I can just pull it right out. See these nails here? Look at that. They're all rusty. Look at that. Here's a hacksaw blade they even left in here. That's a collector's item right there, I must say. See, that's what I was hitting. I kept hitting this stuff here. Okay, so I've got my cutters. I can cut those off because they're thin enough and rusty enough I could snap right through. Now, if they weren't, you could grab it right here and bend it back and forth. But because this wood is all messed up, I could take that and push it straight back in. See? I can push it back into the hole. Bye-bye. Here's another one right here. Get that one. Looks like I can bend it a little bit. That one's going to be a little bit more tricky. I can't get my cutters all the way back in there. Well, maybe I can do it far enough. Try to score it just a little like that, and now maybe I can I can snap it off. There it is, snapped off. Okay, get my tools out of the way, and now I can kind of kind of clean this up here. Just getting ready for the glass company. And then I can look at this and see right in there. See, look, see how flimsy this is. They're going to have to shore this up a little bit. That's not my job. That's the glass company's job at this point. Okay. But any loose paint, check it on this. I don't know exactly how close they're going to come there. See? So I ripped this up a little bit, didn't I? That's because as I was pulling it down, you see this guard. It's open right there. I'm not sure why they have it open. Usually it goes all the way across to kind of protect yourself. And that guard, as I was doing this and getting down, that edge of the guard, see right there, it's dirty. That was rubbing on the, on the top of the window stool. I don't like that. I gotta be more careful with that. I think that's gonna, you know, they may put a flashing up there or, or wherever the transition is. Later on, they may have to put a, a door stop or something on the inside and trim that off. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen here exactly. And just going to take this loose paint off of here. And 
And could this paint, because it's so old, could it have lead in it? Yeah, it could. So that's, you know, if you feel more comfortable having a mask on, doing this, you can, because you don't want to breathe too much of this. That's why I would not recommend trying to get a belt sand, a, a belt sander or, or a rotary sander, palm sander, to start sanding this. Now you got all that dust in there, you're going to be breathing that. It could have lead on it. And that's a no-no. Okay? I just want this kind of flat. I'm not going to scrape all that. Just whatever's loose. Because the window may fit right up there snug. It's going to be a flangeless window, I'm, I'm thinking. And it's going to go on the inside here, and they're going to raise and lower it, whatever. You know, I don't know how they did their measuring because they didn't have any of this trim off. They have to be pretty good at measuring. And uh, they'll flash it in, whatever they have to do. They're supposed to put a piece of trim in there. Lord help them with that because it's not going to fit perfect. Look at this. You got over on the stucco. And if the trim fits tight, they're going to have to chisel that out. But I'm going to let them chisel that out or notch the wood back. I'm not going to do it because if this cracks, it's now a liability factor for me. Okay? I'm not going to do that. I'm choosing to work smart. Now I see a, a little wood section right there that's a little high. I could take my sheetrock knife and I can trim that off like that. I don't think they're going to be at the bottom, but if you have a sheetrock knife, you can do that. If you don't, you want to use your sawzall, you can use your sawzall. Just run it on low. Flip it around. Flip it around. Whoop. This blade eats it up. Get your fingers out of the way. That's it. It'll chop them off in a minute. Okay, I'm not going to mess with that anymore. Okay. Now, if you have a shop vac, a broom, uh, an old paintbrush, I like to save old paintbrushes, and I use that as a little brush in here. I don't have it. There's a there's a shop vac here. I'm going to leave all this stuff here. I'm going to let the glass company take it from here. Okay. Wow. That's what your that's what your window's going to look like. That's all you have to do. That's all I got for this time, but I'll be back with more videos.